Here we have an anterior view of the aortic arch with the brachiocephalic trunk or artery, the left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery. On this model we can again see the brachiocephalic trunk, the left common carotid, and the left subclavian arteries. And this first branch of the brachiocephalic trunk becomes the right carotid artery and the right subclavian artery. On this model, we can see the external jugular vein the internal jugular vein on the deep side, the common carotid artery splitting into the external carotid artery and internal carotid artery, and then we have the facial artery and vein, and we have the superficial temporal artery and vein, with these being branches thereof. Then we have the occipital artery and vein. On this model we can see the vertebral artery running through the cervical vertebrae. This is also where the vertebral vein would sit but it is not shown. Off the superior vena cava we have the left and right brachiocephalic veins. Then we have the inferior thyroid vein the internal jugular vein left, and we have the left subclavian vein. Internal jugular vein right, and the right subclavian vein, the left and right superior thyroid veins. The external and anterior jugular veins are not shown, but would have branches around here. Here we have the arteries of the arm, the subclavian becoming the axillary, the axillary branching into the subscapular, the subscapular branching into the anterior humoral circumflex, a little further down into the posterior humoral circumflex, becoming the brachial, and down past this break, we have the radial and the ulnar. And in the hand, we have deep palmar arches and superficial palmar arches, and all the way at the fingers, we have digital arteries. On this model, we can see the axillary artery becoming the brachial artery, branching into the ulnar artery and the radial artery. On the hand, we could see on the hand we can see a depiction of the superior palmar arch and the digital arteries. And if we come back to the shoulder, we can see the anterior humoral circumflex artery and the posterior humoral circumflex artery. This model shows a better depiction of the palmar arches where we have the superficial palmar arch and the deep palmar arch. For the veins of the arm, starting at the subclavian, this branches into the cephalic and the basilic. A branch off that is the brachial. This vein crossing the elbow region is the median cubital, and this branch right here is the median antibrachial. The branch near the ulna is the ulnar vein. The branch near the radius is the radial vein. And this network of veins in the palm is the palmar venous arches, and then we have digital veins in the fingers. Here we can see a view of the thoracic aorta, the abdominal aorta, the iliacs, and the celiac trunk. On this model we can also see different regions of the aorta, the thoracic aorta, and the abdominal aorta. On the abdominal aorta we have the celiac trunk. It has three branches. In this model they're ambiguous which direction they're going, but their branch going to the right is the common hepatic artery, the branch going to the left is the splenic artery, and a smaller branch also going to the left is the left gastric artery. This branch here is the superior mesenteric artery. This branch here is the inferior mesenteric artery. And these branches here are the left and right gonadal arteries, testicular for males, ovarian for females. Furthermore, these arteries to the kidneys are the left and right renal arteries.
Here's another view of the superior and inferior mesenteric arteries. The abdominal aorta branches into the left and right common iliac arteries, and each of those branch into the left and right external iliac artery and internal iliac artery. This is a model showing the inferior portion of the liver. When oriented like this, we would be looking at the anterior side of the liver, the inferior vena cava, and this would be an anatomical position. From the inferior side, we can see the proper hepatic artery and the hepatic portal vein and the hepatic veins. And on this picture, we can see the superior vena cava, the inferior vena cava, and the hepatic veins. Also, we can see the iliacs. This is a depiction of the hepatic portal system, all draining into the hepatic portal vein. We have the left gastric, the splenic, and the inferior and superior mesenteric veins, all draining into the hepatic portal vein. In the liver, this blood will be filtered and drain into the hepatic veins. Starting with the femoral, we have a branch diving deep, the deep femoral. Coming down behind the knee is the popliteal. Branching out in front is the anterior tibial, and behind the tibia is the posterior tibial, and behind the fibula is the fibular. We have an artery coming across the top of the foot called the dorsalis pedis. If we take a look at the right side of the picture, we can see these branches a little better from the popliteal. The first branch is into the anterior tibial. The second branch is into the fibular. And this continuation is the posterior tibial artery. On this model, we can see the femoral artery and vein. We can also see some branches of the femoral artery. This is the descending and ascending branches of the lateral circumflex femoral artery. On the front here, we have the patellar anastomosis. On the back, we have more branches of the femoral. These are the superior and inferior gluteal arteries. And down here we have the popliteal artery and vein. Here we have the superior lateral, superior medial, inferior lateral, inferior medial, genicular arteries. Then we have the posterior tibial artery, which branches into the anterior tibial and the fibular artery. It's unclear on this model as to whether or not those are the true branches, but that is what we will call these branches in this lab. And then on the front, we have a better view of the anterior tibial artery which would become the dorsalis pedis if it were shown. And in the leg, we have a similar situation. We have a femoral, a deep branch, the deep femoral, a large branch coming all the way down for the great saphenous, a section behind the knee, the popliteal. And if we look at the right picture of the popliteal, we can see the branches better. This top branch, the small saphenous, the second branch, anterior tibial, third branch, fibular, and the continuation of that vein is the posterior tibial. For the lymphatic system, we have lymph, which is an interstitial fluid picked up by the capillary beds by the lymphatic system and returned to the blood. We have lymphatic vessels, which are used to transport the lymph throughout the body. We have lymphocytes that carry out specific immune responses. And we have lymphoid organs which are the spleen, thymus, lymph nodes, and tonsils. Here's a depiction of the major lymphatic vessels. We have the right lymphatic duct, draining into the right subclavian vein. And then we have the thoracic duct. And this bundle down here is the cisterna chile. On this model, we can see the pharyngeal tonsils, or adenoids. We can see the lingual tonsils. And we can see the palatine tonsils.